Hello, and this is the second part of episode 5 in the JavaScript Bushido series where I teach Cookstool programming. Today I will take the A-frame based 360 degree image viewer from the first part and build a Cookstool based user interface around this code. This web application will look and feel like a normal desktop application and you will be able to add this app as a floating window to your own web page at the end. As always, you will find links to the code and the development area below this video. Alright, and here we are again. So um, before we get started with the code, with actual coding, let me clean up a little bit. So one of the things I want to do, let's create a directory for the images here. And um, then let's open this directory up and let's just move all the images into this directory uh, okay so we clean up a little bit uh, to keep the code separated from the images and to keep it a bit tidier and uh, then the next thing we want to do is we want to create another directory and that is something where we uh, keep the images for the controls and uh, I do this because I have already prepared this for for uh, this episode so hold on one second let me upload the controls here so we're going to go and upload and then I'm browsing so you won't be able to see these here but I can upload them all and then we wait until they're done it should be done it should be fairly soon here go and the last one all right so we can close this out and uh, we can move this away and one of the first thing that we want to do is we want to use this uh, this code from the last episode here and then let me open this here in the, in the browser if you remember that was the code that had the a-frame library stuff in there so let's copy this and pass it in here let's rename this to um, frame. And let's get all this copy okay and we can close this here and uh, so that was the document that I just copied and uh, we can get rid of all of this JavaScript that we added in here is not longer required so we can also get rid of the assets because now we want to load the assets dynamically and uh, since we're not really using the cursor either we can get rid of the animation and we can uh, get rid of the text uh, which were which used to be the control so that makes this, the whole scene just very nice and uh, small And let's save this but now what one thing that we have to do is we have to actually add another script in here and that script is to handle dynamic changing of the background image so uh, let me go through it's called uh, change to and the first thing that we do is we get the element by ID for panel and panel is the sky box here as defined here and currently it's defaulting to a, a certain image and then once we get this uh, this node, we uh, create a new image. Uh, we add an event listener for, and we wait for the load function to complete. And then uh, once the load function is complete, we set the attribute source of that skybox to the source of that image. And um, this we do this in that way because uh, it will it will load the image in the background, and the user can continue to work the uh, use the user interface and uh, work just normally until until such a time that the image is actually loaded into the uh, browser's cache and then in order to kick everything off uh, this line will assign the URL that we pass in uh, and trigger the the loading of that, we don't need that and the loading of the image all right so then the next thing that we're going to do is we create uh, right away we create a new class this time is going to be a standard cookstool class and uh, we call this the 360 viewer class and 
let's save this great so here we have that class and um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove all of this code here including the buttons save this and let's have a look at what it looks like just like we expected an empty frame and then once we have that I have my code copied in here and this code will then generate the uh, um, interface for the 360 uh, handler and uh, as you can see here we need to create another function called um, build 2d window build 2D window. and uh, let me let me copy uh, that code, uh, code in here as well and uh, here we go so this code will take care of the basically the 2d display uh, when, when we don't want to display the image on, on a sphere so let me go through the code and show you what the code actually does so the first line is that it will create the build 2d window but what it does here eventually it will just hide it away to uh, start out with the 360 view and then here we create an iframe and that iframe when it's once it appears we can actually uh, go ahead and use it we don't want to use it before it appears which would make it an invalid object and then the next four objects that we create are all related to the previous strip at the bottom so this is the previous strip that we want to use and you see the gray background and uh, the active images so this is ha this is done by creating a semi-transparent gray backdrop which is disassociated from the actual scroll container the scroll container itself is just there to contain the size of the ins uh, the the object which is inside and that is a composite container and this container has a hbox lay layout and the next couple of lines is where we're going to go ahead and create some of the buttons for the previous and the next and the info button. And the info button is a collapsible menu on the top right corner. On the top we have the this menu, this, this is the info button and once I click on it, it animates these other buttons down here. And the 360 view is where we can look around. And the 2D view is basically showing the whole picture with inside one frame. Okay, and the last couple of lines of code here just take care of the uh, event handler for the previous and the next button. When I click on it, I want to move uh, switch to the next image or the previous image. Then down here we handle the info button where we update the state and uh, either collapse it into the view or out of the view. So now that we created the, the widgets, all we have to do here on the top is to actually uh, initialize a couple of variables let me uh, go through this as well so here we're going to be from the top left 10 we sent the content padding of the internal window uh, to two pixels uh, set, a, set it fully transparent and the width and the height of the object the path defines where we find the actual windows uh, sorry the actual icons for the controls and as I uh, showed you before these are the controls which I uh, built for this application and then we have a couple of other attributes which I will go on it to create a detail in a little bit so if we do this because we built the rich window here and then we load the images and then finally we show that window and that should get us almost to the point where we can see something now as you have seen uh, there were some animations which happened inside the uh, the window and um, for this I created a small helper function well maybe not so small but it's fairly simple actually it's uh, taking the uh, item and from that item it gets a dome element and here the KF which stands for keyframes define the start and the end point of the animation to call this uh, at bomb element animation animate function which will take care of all the rendering if you pass it this anim object with it with the defined keyframes here and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to 
create the uh, animations uh, functions that we're going to call. So this is create an image button, uh, a function that I created here for every image uh, button that I created, create image button. I pass it the name of the active and the passive uh, icon, and then I pass it the, the location of the icon, uh, of the button to uh, to create. And then if we click on the top right menu, you either expand it or you collapse it. And that will call this animate function that we just defined on the top with the uh, appropriate calling attributes. And if you want to collapse it, uh, the same thing, you call it with the appropriate attributes. And then finally, show controls is for the preview strip at the bottom. So if you click on it, if you show it, you move it up, you zoom up, and then if you want to hide it, you move it down. But when do you move it down? Well, that is handled through these functions, the mouse over and mouse out, which are being called from here, mouse over and mouse out. These functions for the back and the preview strip. So if we take a look, quick look at these functions, uh, all they do is basically just um, set this flag to true and then they show the controls, calling this function to either show or hide these controls. And if you want to hide the control, uh, what will happen is actually there is going to be a timer uh, that expires after five seconds and after five seconds it will automatically hide the controls if no action happened before. We have uh, we are going to handle the switch 2D and switch uh, 360 event and that is basically just a matter of playing the hide and show game. So the iframe we either hide it and show the 2D, the two-dimensional view or we do it the other way around. We show the iframe or and hide the two-dimensional dimensional view. And finally, the toggle button is uh, this function up here. And that function basically is taking the info button and toggling the icon for that info button to the up arrow or the down arrow. And I can show it to you here. Um, this is the info button and if I click on it, it collapses down and I can switch between the different modes. And uh, if I click on it again, it collapses up. And if you look closer, you will see that the icon actually here will change. So that's what this one function is doing. Okay, we're almost done, hang in there. Um, one of the next things that we need to add here is basically adding the images. And for that, we created this load, I created this load images function, which is called from the constructor. So in here we're basically hard coding the values for now, uh, but later we can, we can replace this with a dynamic call to the backend and I will show that as well. So we're faking, we're creating some fake data here where we give the file name and we give the name of a thumbnail. And then we assign this array this that we just created to the data point and we're adding the images uh, one by one to the preview th uh, strip at the bottom. And then eventually, once everything is done, we want to display the last, uh, sorry, the first image that uh, is in that data strip. And then we're coming to actually displaying those images. So let me get these functions in here. The scale image function is basically just used for the two-dimensional display. So when we want to stretch the image to the, to the total width and height of that display. The uh, display image is the function that is the main function and it has two, it, it serves two purposes. First it sets the caption of the, of the window and then it first sets the thumbnail and then second it goes ahead and it loads the actual image. This will have a very positive effect on the usability as the thumbnail will display immediately while the larger full scale image is being retrieved in the background. And then finally we have the display image function which is a private function inside of this class which will either call the iframe get window and this function the function change to as we defined before or it will load the image and then display it in the 2d view after it's being scaled accordingly and then finally we're going to round it out with the two functions to uh, get the current image, which is basically looking at the data and either retrieving the thumbnail or it's retrieving the full name, file name of the large file. And then we also handle the resize. 
but this resize is only required if we are in the two dimension mode uh, which is the flag that we set when we when we click the button and then um, the only thing we need to take care of now this this class is being called from different places so root is actually being called for a different environment so we have to add this in and what it does it's basically checking if it's in uh, Astronos it will use the AO desktop and add this window otherwise uh, the application the cookstore application will pass in the root um, container uh, where you can add this uh, then in and then we'll save this up and let's see what we're going to see so we have the images being loaded and the application works as you would expect. Let's maximize this. And here you see the pixelated first as the, the larger image that is being loaded in the background. Right? And uh, we also have the menu here. And let's see if we switch it to, to these. So this is how the picture looks like without the 360 degree view. And uh, it looks quite nice. Switch over to 360, it works as we would expect them to work. Now, I know that this was a lot, however, if you follow the link below this video, you will be taken to the playground where you can play with the actual source code from this episode. You will also find a bare Cookstore application which you can download and integrate into your own web page. If you found some value in this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel or visit my blog to find more information about this project and many other interesting advanced projects like this. Also, please let me know if you're interested in a certain topic which I can pick up in a future episode. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you back soon.